So looking at the agenda, we start with a basic intro about our channel, why this session has been organized. And we also received many queries from our subscribers and also from the people in Facebook page personally and also personal messages. We'll all be posting all these queries in the upcoming minutes. And also a short intro about the Hair Vincent's Hagedon and also his company where he is working on. And few important information about the basics of the German tax system. And the questions from our subscribers and later you all can shoot your queries directly with the tax consultant and he'll be happy to answer your queries. And later we also have an offer that we can also do your tax declaration with the help of this consultant through which you also get benefited out of it. So little about our channel actually. So I'm not sure how many people have been our subscribers till today. I mean, uh, this is basically run by my wife actually. And today she has to take care of her kids, so that's why she won't be participating in the session, but she'll be coming here and then. And we used to make videos all about the Germany to help our expat and also our Indian community to understand the rules and regulations, German tax system, investment, and also the insurances. Because living in a foreign country without understanding their language is always a tedious task, and also following up in each and every update from the German government, and also wanted to share this information to our community. So that's a motive behind why we created this channel. And also we want to support our community by answering all kind of queries. We also have a separate Facebook page and separate Facebook group for the women, which is managed by my wife and also a separate Telegram channel talking about the investment and also general queries. I will also post these channel links in the chat messages so you can also join in these links and get benefit out of it. Yeah. yeah. We also made many videos about the German tax system, how to fill your German tax in an easier way, also how the German tax rates, tax slabs, how can we claim more money with help of the tax returns, and who's are by the girls, do we need to pay tax, sending money to parents on double tax agreement. These are very short information what I posted, but we have made almost around 10 to 15 videos in the past year, and it had also a very good response from you people. Thank you so much for all these things. So this is how we also got in touch with many tax consultants and also the tax software people to support our channel and also for our community here. So I now request uh, Vincent to take over the thing, talk about this particular uh, company award. OK. Hi, all. My name is Vincent Hagedon. I work, the, I work as a tax advisor assistant right now. So right now I'm not an official tax advisor. I will do my tax advisor exam, in, uh, I hope, uh, in the winter this year. Um, but I have to learn really a lot for this because the exam is really hard. But um, I work together with, with my boss. His name is Andre Treutsch. You can see him on the photo. The left guy, that's me, and the right guy is my boss. Um, he has a uh, usually or um, a, a normal tax advisor company, which is called ETL, RT and Kollegen. There we work for mostly business uh, customers and do their bookkeepings, balance sheets, and um, also tax declarations. But uh, since last year, we started to do um, our new company. It's called ShortTax. And with ShortTax, we uh, finally worked just for private persons um, because there are really a lot of uh, customers who need help with, it, with uh, filing their tax declarations. And the usual tax advisor is too expensive for most of uh, the customers because um, yeah, usual tax advisor costs really a lot, but uh, I can tell you later something about uh, how much uh, official tax advisor costs. Uh, yeah. And today I try to uh, answer all your questions. Um, I will first I will tell you something about uh, yeah, tax declaration uh and also some questions um which you already got um but really first of all i have to say everything what i'm saying today is only general information and not a binding information for you so if you need really a, a binding statement from my side then you have to call me and then we have to make an impersonal meeting because for binding statement, I really have to check uh, the, the complete situation. Um, yeah, so today just general information and no final statements from, from my side. Thank you, Vincent. It's also very clear for us, actually. So we basically want to understand how the system works. 
and we also have personal queries and we are, I have spoken with you already about all these queries and we can go step by step. And people, if you have any kind of queries, just post your query in the comment section. I as a moderator will ask these questions in the corresponding things and you all will have a chance to shoot your personal queries also in the end. Yeah, so so if some of you have really a question to the actual point, uh, which you think is really uh, quick to answer from from my side, then just ask during my presentation. But if you have uh, another question, um, please ask it at the end. OK, I also request other participants to mute it so that it's easy and comfortable for others to follow it. Thank you. OK. So the first very point actually about the basics of the German tax system. Let us go with the first point with the tax percentage. Basically, I as an Indian, when I come to Germany, I always hear that we have to pay 42 percentage of the tax on the total income. Is this really true or is this something which is misconception followed between the other? I mean, is there any kind of misconception here? Can you explain a bit about how much tax percentage are we really paying here? Yeah, so so the, the 40 percent, this is a uh, wrong information. Yeah. In Germany, um, it depends. Uh, so, so the tax percentage depends on your total income. Um, usually customers, um, when, when you're married and you both, both of you are working, um, you may, uh, you maybe have a total income of around 100 to 150,000 euro. Um, then you will just pay a tax percentage from round about 30 to 33 percent. Um, that there's, uh, there's the maximum tax percentage of, uh, 42%. Um, and you have to pay the 42 percent when you are single or married, but when you're single and you have a total income from, let's say, 150 case or 200 case, then you have the tax percentage from 42 percent. And there's also put the possibility when you earn more, maybe let's say 250 case or 300 case, then you have to also to pay 45 percent income tax. But this is the maximum tax percentage we have here in Germany. And um, so the normal people uh, don't need to pay this tax percentage. This is just for really rich guys. OK, so if my salary is somewhere between 50 to 70 K, let's say this is a normal salary. Anyone who starts in Germany. So what would be the average percentage? Here? Yeah, I, I think the, the um, uh, tax percentage is around 30%. OK, so it means on it's something like a progressive store as such, right? So what exactly I must research if I want to know the exact tax percentage? Is there any kind of link where we can look into it? Yeah, um, so first of all, you, you can Google it. We have a um, different or a really difficult type um, to, to get your tax percentage. Um, you will get this answer. How much is my tax percentage when you do your tax declaration and you finalize your tax declaration? Because um, you have a total income, and on the other hand, you have some costs which um, were deduct your total income. So if you earn 50 case and you have some costs from round about um, 15 case, so you have just a taxable income from 35,000 euro, and the 35,000 euro, you have just a tax percentage of around 26, 27 percent. Okay. So mm -hmm. you can just um, Right now, you can just calculate it. Um, so it's nearly every time 30 to 35 percent, but the exact tax percentage you will just get at the end of the year while doing the tax declaration. OK, so if I want to find myself, I can Google something called Pesolische Steuersatz through which I enter my total salary just to know that how what is my average percentage, what I pay really, right? That would be one easy step for the people. Yeah, that's good. OK, thank you. So coming next point, the deadline for submission. And do I need to submit my taxes every year or I can also just do my submission even after one or two years? So this depends whether you are single or you, you are married. So when you're single with just one main job, tax clause number uh, with tax clause one, um, you don't have to do your tax declaration. You can just do it uh, once every four years. So right now you can do the tax declaration for 2017, 18, 19, and 20. And you can do the tax declarations till end of December 2021. Um, 
if you don't do this to this date, so next year you can just do the tax regulations for 2018, 19, 20, and 21. 19, 20, and 20. When you are married, um, or one step back, when you are single with tax class one, um, and you have uh, some special income, yeah. um, maybe you just invested in bitcoins and have really good profit on it, or if you have um, a small business on your own and you earn therefore some money, or like yeah, last year, yeah. um, you got Kurzarbeitergeld um, or Elterngeld because you get a new child, then you have to do your tax declaration. For example, the Kurzarbeitergeld and also the Elterngeld is tax free, yeah. but this money will increase your tax percentage a little bit. And because of this increasing part, you have to do your tax declaration because it is also possible that you have to make a back payment at the end of the year. Okay, regarding more detail about this Kursarbeiter and the tax we want to pay, maybe we can come. What is the case if I'm doing the tax declaration with the help of the software or that I'm going with the help of a tax consultant? Do I have any kind of de different deadlines for this case? Yeah, so so, so the usual uh, deadline for everybody who has to do your ta the, the tax declaration is end of July for the following year. For example, you have to do your tax declaration 2020 till July 2021. If you do your tax declaration with a tax advisor, with an official tax advisor, uh, and you give him the power of attorney for your um, personal uh, tax de declaration, um, then there is a new deadline. It is end of February 2020, uh, 22. Yeah. So you have more than one year uh, time to do your tax declaration. Okay, if I understood right, I as a normal person, if I'm doing it with the help of the software, when I fall under the mandatory category, yeah. I must do the declaration by end of this uh, July this year. And if yeah. I do with the help of the tax consultant, I have time till next year, February end, which is for 2022 February end. Am I right? That's correct. Yeah. Perfect. So then it all depends if you want to do with the help of the tax consultant, we have a little bit extended timeline or we have the shorter timeline actually. Okay, guess someone is using the PowerPoint. I just good. And which set of people do need to declare the taxes? Are there any mandatory category? This set of people fall under the voluntary category, and other set of people fall under the mandatory category. Can you just categorize who are um, obliged to do it without fail? Um, so do you mean who has to do the tax declaration? Yes. Yeah. So um, everybody who is married with tax class combination three and five, then you have to do your tax declaration every year because especially in this tax class combination, there is the possibility that you have to make a back payment to the tax office um, because during the year you have uh, too much um, tax free amount calculated in your salary slips. So for this guy who has the tax class number three. And um, also when you are are invested in, in um, bitcoins or crypto and you have yearly a total win with this, then you also have to do your tax declaration every year. And yeah, and also when you have uh, your own business, then you have to do your tax declaration. But I think these two, three positions um, are finally, yeah. Okay, got it. And what is the best tax loss combination if both the people are working in the family here? Yeah. How do we define it? And is it any possible to change the tax classes multiple times during the year? So um, it depends on the personal situation. Um, usually you can say if both of you earn nearly the same, then the tax loss combination four and four is better for you. Um, if one of, the, um, one of you earns really more than the other, then the best uh, tax loss combination is three and five. Three for the um, uh, for, for the one who earns more and five who earns less. Uh, what is the and case if I chose the wrong tax loss combination? Uh, do I get back the money what I paid to the financier in the end of the year or do I don't get it? Yeah, you, you will get it back at the end of the year because there is no wrong um, decision. Yeah? You can just um, decide it during the year but at the end of the year, you will do your tax declaration and then it doesn't matter which tax class combina com combination you got during the year. You will just do your tax declaration and at the end, 
everything is the same. The, the only uh, difference is um, if you get back a refund or if you have to make a back payment to the tax office. Okay, so it all depends. Do, uh, sometimes I do get letter from the finance I'm telling to do the tax declaration. Some people don't get this letter. What is the reason behind this? Um, I think this is the case. If you never did a tax declaration before, then the tax office, um, uh, let's say, didn't know you, and so they won't ask for the tax declaration. But um, as soon as you did your first tax declaration, usually the tax office will ask it, will ask for it every year. Okay, okay, got it. So it all depends on the personal scenario. So the financial is it up and answers us. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, thank you for this thing. So I hope the basics of German tax system is a little more clear because this is a very, very common question uh, which I see often in the Facebook. We need to declare the taxes now or next year. Do I have time? Other things. And this must be well, well answered here with, uh, through Vincent's. Good. Then next, let's go to the next topic. Yeah. What kind of expenses can be declared here? Because we have too many expenses which we can say I spend too much money for this particular month. Uh, can you just give a short overview under what scenarios which expenses can be declared here? Yeah. I guess consider, considering me as a normal employee. I'm not talking here about the freelancer or other cases. To the yeah. freelancer, I'll come up in the later stage. Okay, so you can, uh, first of all, there are different types of, of costs you, which you can declare in a tax declaration. So the main um, position is costs for your job as an employee. You can declare every cost you have for your job. Um, best, the best example is like last year. I think most of you um, have to work from home last year. And so maybe you have to buy a, a new desk and an ergonomic chair so that you can better work and you have to buy some displays. So everything you bought just for your job or that you can work also from home, you can declare these costs. Um, and then there are some other topics, um, for example, insurances, um, you can declare every insurance, um, you have on your own. Um, it, uh, sometimes, um, it is not good for you or it, it, it doesn't change anything if you declare all your insurances, because there's a maximum amount uh, for the tax declaration. And usually you will reach this maximum amount. Um, with your pension insurance and also with your health with, with your health insurance, so um, it, 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 there's no need to declare more private um, insurances. Uh, is there also a possibility to declare the private affiliation or legal insurances and health insurance already been declared through the help of the employer? Yeah, yeah uh, so so private health insurance is uh, you, you can declare it. But usually you, you've already reached the maximum amount with the health insurance. So it, it is not, you, you have no benefit when you declare your um, insurance, so the private health flight insurance in the tax okay. declaration. Is there, any, is there any kind of limit do we have the, uh, how much amount uh, we can declare the private health flight and legal insurances? Is there any kind of limit do we have? No. Um, but for the legal insurance, um, you, have, you have to look in your contract with the legal insurance because most of the legal insurances uh, are also um, that you are uh, for your job. There's a small amount in this total amount, um, which is just for your job when you have um, uh, when you have um, problems with your employer, then you can also use your legal insurance and for this. Usually there are costs in it from around about 100 to 130 euros. And these costs you can declare in your tax declaration uh, for your job. Okay. I also have another question. Can you also declare our driving license expenses here? Because uh, some people may be in uh, need of this driving license for their job. Can we also claim this? Uh, no. So usually uh, you can't declare costs for your, uh, driving, uh, for, your, for your driver license. Only in case if you need your driver license for your job and only for your job. But th th there's no possibility that you can declare it. It is only when you do your, uh, I hope every everybody uh, knows the word LKW. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> when you do your LKW driver license, yeah, then sure, you, you, you can declare these costs in a tax equation, but the driver license for a normal uh, car, you can't declare it. It's just private because you can use your private car, you will use it uh, to drive, uh, I don't know, to holidays or with your family somewhere. So there's no possibility. So it is very important that expenses which are spent only for the purpose of job can be submitted in a tax declaration. Any expenses which is related to my private life, this is not possible. So this is this can be made so simplified, right, in this way? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Okay, is there any kind of, uh, there are some scenarios then I don't have any option to spend for my yeah. job. Do I get any kind of minimum amount which I can do it in my tax declaration, any kind of pauschale? Yeah, so um, there's a big pauschale from 1,000 euro. Everybody will get this without declare anything. Um, but usually if you have only a few costs, then you will reach the 1,000 euro. And when you declare um, every single cost, you will have more than 1,000 euro for, uh, for your job costs. Because um, you will begin um, with costs for driving um, from home to your work. So... Ah. There's the difference, you can declare the kilometer pauschale, so 30 cents for each kilometer, or you can declare the costs for the uh, public transportation. Um, then the next position is um, stuff for your work. Maybe you bought an, a new laptop and you use it, let's say 50% for your job and the 50% for private, then you can just declare 50% your, um, of your laptop costs. Um, and also when you buy some new mobile phones and you have to use your mobile phone for your job. And yeah, then there, especially in 2020, you have the possibility to declare costs for your home office. Um, but I think we will go to this position. Yeah, regarding home office, I'll come back to you. Uh, can yeah. you say what is the maximum amount for each of the sector? Uh, let's say for Verbung's cost, then there is a maximum limit is 1,000 euros. Can you also say any other maximum limit which we get automatically when we submit the taxes? So any kind of limits you can tell us? Um, so the 1,000 euros, everybody will get this. But, but these 1,000 euros are already calculated in your personal salary slips. So if you have really no costs and you have just your salary slips or your Lohnsteuerbescheinigung at the end of the year, and you have no other insurances, then the usual tax declaration will end with a refund of maybe 50 cents. Because these 1,000 euros um, are already calculated and included in your salary slip. And there's no other um, pauschal amount you can declare in the tax declaration. Um, because there's also the tax-free amount from around 8,000 euro per person. But this is also calculated and included in your personal in, in your personal salary slip. Okay. Uh, can you also include the ARDZM bills? Well, I, I didn't get it. What do you say? Uh, there is something called ARDZM, which we pay on radio tax. Can you also declare this radio tax in our tax declaration? Uh, so now this is this is also just private because this is for your private flat. Because everybody who lives in Germany. Um, have to pay this, um, this Rundfunkgebühr, and so this is just for your private flat. Okay. The, 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 the only thing you can declare for your private flat is when you have um, housekeeping, cleaning ladies, um, or usually you will get um, a yearly invoice from your landlord every year, because usually you have to pay um, let's say 1,200 euro total rent. And in this amount, there's a, a rent, a cold rent from 1,000 euro, and you pay the even cost of 200 euros. And usually at the end of the year, you will get an invoice which um, says, okay, there were costs for your flat um, of around 2,380 euros. You already paid the even cost of 2,400 euro. And in this document, you will find some costs for cleaning ladies, some um, workers, um, because you have to pay for the whole building. So okay. everyone has some costs for cleaning ladies, 
for the for the floors and also for some workers who will repair something in your in your building okay so it's always advisable to get this particular bill from our house owner at the end of the year or start of the year how much expenses we paid for the name and cost it. so this can also be submitted in our tax declaration yes yeah usually you will get this invoice maybe in may or yeah, april or may so what is the case uh, i'm doing my tax declaration now in the month of february but i will be receiving the uh, this uh, neighbor cost bill in the later month can i also do my tax declaration once again and get it claim or how does it work here so you can also use um, the neighbor cost abrechnung from last year so when you do the tax declaration too early then you can just use your neighbor cost abrechnung excuse me i request others to mute the channel please it's a little bit disturbing for the others to follow it up thank you so you can also use uh, let's say the neighbor cost abrechnung for the year 2019 instead of 2020 and you will use the neighbor cost abrechnung for the year 2020 for your tax declaration in um, tax declaration 21 okay so this is easy easy way to handle it yeah mm -hmm. And what is the case if I'm doing a relocation from one city to other city or are coming from India to Germany for the, for the very first time for my job purpose? Can we also get the tax claims here? I mean, can we get any kind of rapat? Or also, can I yes. want my flight okay. expenses here? Yeah. So, um, when you have movement costs, let's say you, you move the first time from India to, India to, 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 to Germany. 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 Then you can you declare... Can declare I can hear okay. myself. Somebody. Yes, now it must be better, I guess. Okay. So, um, you can declare a partial amount um, without showing any invoice uh, of 811 euros, I think it's in 2019, for example, um, per person as cost for movement. When you move um, with your wife and let's say one child, you have costs from 811 for you, 811 for your wife, and I think 370 euros for your child without showing any bill. If you have more costs, especially flight ticket, you have to um, pay for, on your own, and maybe you send some furniture from India to Germany, and um, I don't know, you um, have some other costs to get your new flat here in Germany, then you can also declare your real costs in the tax declaration. But usually um, the, flat the, the, the flat amount from 800 euro for, per person is better for you. Okay, I assume that my employer has already paid money for my relocation. Can I still claim this money in my tax declaration? Do I get still no. this allowance? No. So if, if your employer pays for all of your costs to, to move to Germany, then you are not allowed to declare anything because you didn't have any costs. Okay, so I, in this case, I can't do any kind of relocation. Uh, what is the other scenario? I'm just moving within the same city uh, for my better comfort. Can I still uh, show this in my tax declaration as relocation cost or do we need to give any proper reason? I say one hour of time by traveling to, by shifting my house so that I can reach my workplace very faster. So, um, yeah, usually the, the tax office will just accept movement costs. Um, when you move to your, or when the distance to your job um, will be, um, what is the word? Weniger. Relocation? Oh, uh, yeah. um, the, the distance to your job. Is reduced. Um, it's uh, Decreased. It's less. Yeah. It's, it's reduced um, from around 50 kilometers so that you really save time during the week when you have to go to the office. But when you just move, let's say, for example, in Munich, um, the tax office will always say, no, this is just uh, for private or because of private reason. And you can't declare anything. Only if you um, work with um, a movement company. So somebody will which uh, who will carry your stuff to your new flat these are a worker and when you get an invoice you can this you can declare these costs like the nebenkostenabrechnung of your um, landlord in the tax declaration 
Okay. Uh, is it also possible to claim the or personal loans or house loans taken in Germany in your tax declaration as a Verbungskosten or is it not possible? No, that's not possible. It's just private. Okay, I got your point. So, okay, I think so. Then we got a little basic overview what kind of expenses we can submit in the tax declaration. Maybe regarding more of your questions, I will uh, make them get them answered in the end of the session because we have some more important points which is more related to your queries then. But I'm keep on following all your queries. I'll yeah. make sure to answer them as much as possible. Thank you. So next thing regarding the home office thing, because it's a very common thing in the, in the year 2020, most of the people have been working from home. Can you just explain, uh, because there is something called up to 1,250 euros, we can do it in our tax declaration. And also there's a new law says that up to 600 euros, although you, uh, you don't have any kind of special houses or anything, you can still submit in tax declaration. Can you explain this very clearly? What is home office under what scenario this home office can be counted for the finance declaration and what to finance and look into it exactly? Okay, so um, let's just um, have a look on the year 2020, yeah? because um, there nearly everybody works from home. So in the year 2020, uh, it doesn't matter whether you have a real home office in your, in your personal flat. Um, you will get costs for your home office because everybody uh, was working from home from five euros per day. The maximum amount is 600 euro. That is 120 days. If you have more working days from home, um, yeah, right now there's no solution for this. Um, but yeah, that's the rule. So can so you just can declare 600 euro costs for being in home office. Usually the home office. Um, is when you have the real room in your own flat which you just use for your work so there is no bed in it there is no um so no private stuff it is just a really um room just for your work where, where you have to work the whole time then you can declare the correct costs so you can um you can declare the um uh untile <laughs> so you can declare of the portion um so the okay the room rent of the rent right yeah okay the part yeah. of the room expenses can be also declared in this tax submission for the home office yeah uh, but, but, but it's not is only right? when you have really one room just for your work in your own in, in your own flat and you have also to What uh, we, uh, we can't follow you, Vincent. I can't hear you. Uh, Vincent, do you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you again. Okay. Yes, please. So, sorry. Um, um, so, um, for the home office pauschal of 600 euro, you don't need any documents to show the tax office. Maybe the tax office is asking for. Um, can you show me that you really work more than 180 days from home? If I, I think um, most of the customers will have uh, just an email from, from their employer, uh, which said, um, please work from home right now. Um, and that's it. I think you all got it in, in March or April last year. And that's fine. I think no tax office will ask for any documents. This is only the case if you, will, if you want to declare your correct costs for one home office room in your flat. But therefore you also need a confirmation of your employer that you have no working space in the office. So that there's no space for you and you are not allowed to, to work in the office. Then you can declare your correct costs of your home office room. What is the situation when my employer provides me an option to work from a workplace? Can I still show that I am working from home and submitting taxes? Yeah, sure. So it, it's just when you work from home, when you um, was in your office, then you can declare costs to travel to your office. Yeah. So it is how was the situation really? And this situation you will just declare in your tax equation. If you don't have to work from home, but you did work from home, you can declare five euros per day. 
And uh, under which category do we need to declare this home office under Verbungskosten or is there any the special uh, category for it? Yeah, it, it is um, in, the, in the point Verbungskosten for the year 2020, there's a new um, field in, in this uh, uh, topic, in this Verbungskosten sheet. And there you can just say how many days you work from home. And when you um, type 120, then the software will automatically uh, put the amount of 600 euro. Uh, also, there are some scenarios where I was not staying in Germany, but I was in India for my work. I mean, due to my personal reasons, I visited India and I held it there and started working from India. Is it still possible to say that I was working from home for tax declarations? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I think there's no problem yeah, because you work from home and it doesn't matter when whether you work from your German flat or from your for your Indian flat. OK. Fine, got it. So uh, I also heard some rumors saying that we need to send a picture of our home office to the financier. Is it true? No, that, that's not true because nobody has a really home office. Everybody sits on his eating table or at the, at the couch and is working from there because you don't have um, a really a, a real home office room. So this okay. is just the case if you have really one separate room. Okay, got it. So it's more than sufficient if I can show my house contract, say this much big space and I have a separate room. Uh, in case of queries, I can still send them back. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. So let's go to the next section actually. So yeah, can we claim the following things in tax declaration? Uh, I as a single person, sorry, someone is taking it. Just a second, please. Uh, people kind of do not uh, operate the PowerPoint. I don't know how to switch it off. <laughs> yeah, I think this is uh, correct. Yes, I as a single person, I used to visit my family, parents in India. Can I still claim my travel expenses uh, for visiting my parents in our tax declaration? No, there's usually no um, possibility because this is just for your uh, a private reason. You want to see your family in India. And it's like to you do a holiday. The Absolutely. the only uh, possibility you can declare it or you can try to declare it is um, uh, when your parents are sick and you have to take care about their them. Okay, and I so, remember supporting parents maybe a next stage because I heard something called Lebensmittelpunkt because it's something similar to the Doppelhaushaltsführung. Uh, because yeah. my only family is India. My fa my father and mother are my only family for me. I don't have anyone here. Can I still say that this is the reason that I can claim my flight tickets of visiting my parents in this case, or it's not possible? So um, in this case, you can try it. Um, but I think the tax office um, won't accept it directly. So I think for this topic, you have to do an objection and you have to discuss really hard with the tax office. And I'm not sure whether you will get this because the tax office um, really um, uh, check your Lebensmittelpunkt and they will have a look at your personal situation. And let's say you lived in Germany for three years, then they say, no, your Lebensmittelpunkt is in Germany right now. Um, it doesn't matter whether you have no family here in, the Germ in Germany, only in India. But um, when you lived here so long, you have some friends here and um, yeah, there's no point who uh, can be seen that you want to go back to India. So the only thing to get this double household and when you can declare all your expenses for traveling back to India is when you're married and when one of this, one of them is, live, uh, is living in Germany and the other one is in India. So and if you can, if my uh, if my wife is staying in India, so I can claim all my expenses uh, traveling to India to visit her in our tax declaration. This will not yeah. be kind of hurdle if I'm right. Yeah. So then you can also declare the, the cost for double household. Then you can declare your co uh, your total rent um, for your flat in Germany as cost for double householding, and you can also declare traveling costs. Um, for visit your family in India. Okay, 
Uh, what are the kind of expenses can be declared with help of the double household here, apart yeah. from the house rent in Germany? So you can uh, declare costs for your rent, but there's a maximum amount for 1,000 euro per month for your flat. And then you can also declare um, some special costs, um, especially in the first year when you have to buy some furniture the first time in Germany, then you can declare these costs. And when you move to Germany really the first time, you can also declare, um, I don't know whether you know this word, Verpflegungsmehraufwendungen. Okay, this um, is something that for my initial three months, depending upon how long I'm away from my city, right, from my workplace. Yeah. And, and, and in the first three months, you can declare for every whole day 24 euros. Yeah. Okay, so it is like a bonus for me. If I if I leave my wife in India and then come to Germany for my work purpose, I can claim all these expenses. Uh, I also heard if I visit, if I move from one city to other city in a new place, I can still say that for the first three months I don't know anything out in the city. So can I also still claim this for flames may offer in this case? Yeah, you can declare it. Yeah. Okay, so whenever we do any kind of relocation, we have to make sure to enter all these expenses. So this will uh, boost up our more of money out of it. Correct. Yeah, but uh, but but please check um, when you have just when you move to another city and you um, lose your old flat, then there's no cost for double household for 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 this topic. So for the Verpflegungsmehraufwendungen for the first three months and also for the complete rent, you need two households. Because uh, then this is just the benefit because you have uh, double costs for your flat. And because of your double costs, you will get your tax percentage back as a benefit. Okay, got your point. Fine. So this is also clear. I think so. Hopefully, this is this point is also very clear. What kind of expenses? So we can claim our house rent, also claim our flight expenses to visit my wife in India. And if I'm also living within the same Germany from one city to other city, then I can claim provided I have my two houses in Germany. If this is not the case, then I can't do this for flings may or not in my tax declaration. Am I making it that's, simple? That's correct, yeah. And then really, um, if you want to, to declare the costs to travel to your parents and when you're single or when you're married and want to visit your, your parents every year, you can try it. But I think the tax office won't accept it and you have really to, to discuss with them. Um, okay, but trying will not easy. be for us, I guess. We can still include all this information because trying is yeah. always a good thing. Uh, if it works out, let it be a lucky factor, I say. Yeah. Okay. So other thing actually about the supporting parents. Most of our parents are almost in the old age, more than 60 plus. What is the important criteria and which documents are required to support them in my tax declaration? And how, what is the maximum amount I can send to support my parents? Okay, so first of all, um, it, it, it depends always on the editor at the tax office. Some editors um, won't ask for anything and then won't check any um, dates of your parents. But there are also some editors uh, who are really strict and check everything twice. And the situation is, in Germany, um, when you are older than 67 right now, then you can go in pension, yeah. Um, I think in India, when I have it correct in my mind, um, uh, the pension older is when you are maybe 55 years old. Uh, it's 58, would... I guess. It's not 55, oh, above 58 is our pension in India. So, so, fif so 58. Um, so if a tax editor is, is asking, why did your parents uh, are not working and you are not allowed to, to declare financial help to your parents when they are not old enough, then you can just say, um, yeah, I, I got this point. But in India, the situation is when you are older than 58, then you go to pen or then, then you are in pension. And when you can just tell this to the, te to, to the editor at the tax office, he will just say, ah, OK, I understood it and that's fine. Because um, it doesn't matter whether your parents are 67 or just 59 or also 55. Um, when they need your financial help, you can declare these costs. And 
for this. Um, there's an official document uh, which the tax office is asked for really often. It's called maintenance declaration. And you have to get this every year from the government in India. It's really easy to get um, what I heard from, from other guys. And it's just, I think it's two pages, three pages, it's four pages. And it's really quick and easy and it's in German and also English. Um, and you just have to declare the personal data of your parents, of your own, um, and also um, the financial situation of your parents. And you have to prove your transfers to your parents. Uh, what is and the case you if I have this document? If I forgot to uh, get this uh, maintenance declaration document signed by the government of India, can I still uh, do it in my tax declaration? And what is the amount which I can declare? Yeah, so you can just declare the costs, but if the tax office is asked for this maintenance declaration and you don't have this, yes. um, the tax office is allowed um, to delete your financial help to your parents. Um, yeah, because they need this document, this official document from from the Indian government. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. And uh, where can we get this particular document? Can you also find it somewhere online? What is the name of it? Yeah, it's it's just called uh, maintenance declaration um, for calendar year, and then you can just write the correct year. Okay, got it. So this is an official document. You can just download it. Um, okay, it's called Unterhaltserklärung, right? The Sunday is yeah. only for us. Yeah, yeah. Unterhaltserklärung. Yeah. Thank you, Sunday. Good. Then I think this is also very clear for us now. Yeah. And the next thing is oh, so. And the, sorry, just just one small uh, thing. You you ask for the maximum amount for the financial help. So the, the maximum amount, it depends um, where your parents are living. So in, in, in your case, I think most of your parents will, uh, will live in India. And there, I think the maximum amount is uh, 4,800 euro. Okay. So if you transfer more than, than this maximum amount, um, you won't get any extra benefit for it. Uh, but if my parents are earning something in India, uh, which is getting from the government as a pension amount, uh, can we still get a complete 4,800 euros or is just uh, deductible from the pension amount? Yeah, it, it will be deducted. But there's a calculation. Uh, your software will do it on, on the software zone. Yeah. So. Okay, fine. Thank you. Good then. Uh, sorry, Balaji, one second. I think, uh, guys, don't worry. Vincent knows these tricks. So just believe him. This is Arvind. Thank you, Arvind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys all will be getting the support from the same tax consultant to do your tax declaration. More about this information, maybe I'll tell in the end how to proceed for this particular case. So, uh, or if I'm not answering the questions, you can still ask Vincent after the session also. So feel free. Yeah, that's correct. Good. The next thing is about the capital gains and most of the people have started trading in different kind of brokers, either in Germany or else in the brokers outside India, I mean broker outside Germany and also in USA. And what is the maximum amount a person can be tax free with the help of capital gains? And how do we need to do it in our tax submission? So in Germany, the tax free amount for capital gains is just 100 euro per person or 800, 1 euro per person. Um, and um, I already heard from some other customers that they have some um, banks from, from which they invest in different kind of stocks and, and shares in other countries. It really, you have to declare your whole world income in Germany when you live in Germany. So it doesn't matter um, which bank account you use. Yeah, You can use your Indian bank account and invest in Indian stocks. It doesn't matter, you have to declare all your total wins in capital gains in Germany. For, for the German tax office, it doesn't matter um, whether you have to pay some taxes in India for your capital gains. Then you can just check whether you can also declare your paid taxes in India in the German tax equation. But you have to declare your total world income here in Germany. Uh, what is the case if I'm also, uh, maybe apart from the capital gains, I also have my additional income in India. 
yeah. either through a house rent or making some kind of coaching classes in India. Do I still need to declare these incomes in Germany? Yeah, you really have to declare your whole world income in Germany. Yeah. Um, Although I have paid taxes already in India, do I still need to pay here? Do I still need to pay taxes again in Germany or do I just need to submit it in my tax declaration here? Yes, you have to submit it in a tax declaration and the software will see um, whether you have to pay a little extra tax or whether um, your total win from, from income from Indian will just increase your tax percentage a little bit. There are two different types. so. Yeah. It's tax free, but it, it but it will increase your tax percentage or it is taxable in Germany. But on the other hand, you will get the Indian paid tax back in Germany. Mm -hmm. OK, OK, got it. And uh, what, uh, what kind of documents are really required for this uh, capital gains here? Well, yeah. Because there are some uh, I mean, I'm not very sure yeah. how the finance and in Germany know where I have invested my money. Because many people are opening accounts in Trading 2 and 2 or Digiro, which is outside of the Germany. And uh, do they really follow it up? Um, so I'm not sure uh, how the tax office is, is, is uh, uh, checking all your financial stuff in other countries. Um, right now, I think they don't have the possibility to, to check really for every guy, every financial bank transfer to, to foreign um banks but i think in the next few years there will be a software and then it's very easy for the tax office um to get all your um financial um investments in the, in the whole world and if this will be the case so if you don't declare your capital gain income here in germany and let's say in five years the tax office um, um, get the information that you have capital gains and you didn't declare this, then they can just change your tax assessment for the last years and you have to pay the, the taxes and you also have to pay for the, um, uh, you have to pay a penalty and this is really hard and it's really expensive for you. So it is really always advisable to declare all kinds of incomes because there is always possibility some people used to forget to uh, declare the bull bed income. So if the financier gets to know this particular scenario, then we may end up paying a huge fine. It's something called Steuer Hinterziehung, correct? That's that's correct. Then it's, it's Steuer Hinterziehung or there's a little bit, it's not that hard, it's Steuer Verkürzung. Okay. So it's, it's really hard and in both cases, so please um, just declare your whole world income in Germany. If you're not sure, just ask a tax advisor. Every tax advisor will, will, uh, can tell you the correct answer. Yeah. Uh, what is the percentage of tax I need to pay on my capital gains if it exceeds the limit which is mentioned by you? Okay, um, the, the tax percentage for capital gains is just 25% uh, plus 5.5% Solidaritätszuschlag. Uh, the, the extra tax in Germany here. So in total, you have a tax percentage from around 26.25% uh, of capital gains. Okay, uh, what is the case if I earn less than 801 euros from the investment? Do I still have to declare it in my taxes? Um, no, then you don't have to declare it. Um, I would suggest just declare your total income. Um, because maybe there's a possibility, especially if you work with German banks, um, that you already paid some taxes. So usually the German bank will pay the um, capital gain tax for you to the tax office. And if you didn't declare your, your gains and also paid taxes in the tax declaration, then you maybe will not get the paid tax or when you pay too much taxes for the capital gains, you will get it back. And what it was a little bit different uh, to understand. So um, just one example, yeah. Um, you have a bank account here in Germany and are invested in stocks and you sell the stocks and you have a total win of, let's say uh, 200, 100 euro. 
and now the, the German bank uh, have to check whether you ask the bank for the tax-free amount of 800 euro, 801 euro. If this is not the case, your bank will just calculate 25% of your 100 euro, so let's say 20 euros, and they will just transfer this amount to your tax office. So you already paid your taxes for these capital gains. And if this 100 euro uh, would be the, the only capital gain you have during the year, um, then you can declare it in your income tax equation. And because there's a tax-free amount from 800 euro and you have paid taxes um, from 20 euros, you will get back these taxes. I hope you understand it. Um, yeah, but this must be a little oh, bit of sorry, yeah, to sorry to interrupt. Just one thing I want to ask on this thing. Uh, what you said is correct, uh, agreed. But in case, for example, if we are using two different uh, apps, one is from Germany, let's say uh, any bank, and we earned, let's say, 1,000 euros, so we have increased our limit, 801 euros. And uh, we have earned some money from trading 212, and we lost uh, more money. Let's say we lost like 300 euros from trading 212. So can we subtract our gain? Let's say we earned 1,000 euros from Deutsche Bank, uh, kind of some kind of portfolio, but I lost 300 euros from some other portfolio. And since this trading 212 app is not in Germany, it's from UK, can I deduct it? Let's say 1,000 minus 300 is my capital gain net is 700 euros. So will I get my 25% back from the finance office, uh, which is more than 801 euros? In this case, it will be 199 euros. Okay. So will I get yes. my money back in this case? Yes, you will. You have just to declare your total loss um, of this uh, app or the other bank, and then uh, then you can just um, have a look at all your capital gains. Okay. So when you have a, when you have just one total income thousand euro and one loss three hundred euro, then you have just to pay taxes of an amount of seven hundred euro. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, please mute it. Thank you. So we have only 30 more minutes, and we'll try to wind up with more other important topics. And regarding the cryptocurrencies, uh, I'm investing in bitcoins and other kind of uh, litecoins. Actually, how does it work in my uh, capital gains tax? Okay. Um, so uh, bitcoins is not the point for the capital gains. Bitcoins is the official word. I think is other income. So this is in paragraph 22 in the income uh, Einkommensteuergesetz, in the income tax law. Um, you have to declare um, a total win when you buy and sell bitcoins um, within one year. So if you just buy it and sell it in the same year, then your total win is taxable and you have to declare it in the tax declaration. The tax percentage depends on your own total income and your personal tax percentage. So if you earn really a lot, it is possible that you have to pay 40% uh, taxes on your total win of um, crypto um, trading. And, Here we yeah. have a question. Um, so uh, that, where in, whereas in India, there are two things. One is the, the stock market and the other one is the FNO, which is called futures and options. So, so when we don't, uh, uh, when we uh, get a gain in in the stock market, either it is a, a short term or a long term, we have a different percentage of uh, tax in India. Whereas, uh, uh, if 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 suppose I'm earning in Germany and I'm investing in India, and uh, I already have to pay a tax in India for a thirty percent of my uh, uh, overall gain because uh, in, in FNO futures and options uh, in, according to Indian tax system we have to pay a thirty percent tax for them. Mm -hmm. So again, should I have to include that in my uh, Germany's uh, overall gain? How, how does it work in the case? Yeah, um, but do, do you know is this called the the thirty percent tax? This is called Quellensteuer. Do you know this? Uh, I'm 
I'm sorry, I don't know this name. So, because um, really um, a lot of banks will, will do this because they have to. When you are a foreigner from, from the bank's view, so when, when you are invested in this Indian bank and you live in Germany, um, then foreign bank banks have to keep a uh, Quellensteuer. This is around 30%. And then you can declare um, this Quellensteuer as paid taxes in your personal tax declaration. Yeah? Okay, the more concrete questions regarding the individual questions, let us take it at the end because we have to hurry up with our session now. So thank you for understanding people. But we understood that for the crypto, we have to anyway declare it, but within the year, it is, uh, must be taxed. When we hold the same crypto more than one year, it is not taxable. But we need to also declare each and every kind of transaction what we did in the cryptocurrency exchange. Am I right, Vincent, what we discussed? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, good. Then let's go with the other things. Next topic. Yeah, there's also some set of people who also work as a freelancer. And what are the things which we can declare in our tax expenses? So you can declare every cost um, for your freelancer job. So when you need something to work as a freelancer, then you can just declare these costs. So everything you, you bought for your freelancer job, you can also declare it in the tax equation. Yeah? There's no maximum amount, there's no limit. You can declare everything you need. Okay, that's a good advantage for all the freelancers here. Uh, also have one other interesting question which we got through a mail. I have purchased my house and sold my house in India. I'm getting back that money from India to Germany. Is it taxable here or is it completely tax free? Um, so you just transfer uh, an amount to your German bank account or? Uh, yes, uh, let's say that I was working in Germany for the past 10 years and I have sent money to India and I'm getting back that money from India to Germany. And uh, how does it work? Do I need to pay again taxes in Germany for bringing my own money? This is the one no, case. No, 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 no. You, you can just transfer your money um, whenever and wherever you want. Yeah, You can just transfer 10,000 euro per day to your own bank account, to India and back to Germany. It doesn't matter. Yeah? Okay. I also have a scenario. My parents would like to give me some amount for my personal needs in Germany. Do I need to pay tax on this amount? Um, so this is a gift, and um, when it's just a small gift, just say uh, 100, 200 euro, there's nothing you have to keep in your mind. Yeah? But if you will get a gift from your parents for uh, really a lot of money, so let's say you will get uh, 400,000 euro, then you have to keep in mind, okay, there's a maximum amount uh, from gifts from parents to their children of 400,000 euro every 10 years. So just for example, you will get 400,000 euros this year and 100,000 euro next year. So you got too much money from your parents. And now you have to do, a, what is it called in English? A gift tax declaration. And then you have to pay the gift tax of the too much received amount of 100,000 euro. So just keep it in your mind when you get money from your parents and when it's really a lot, keep it in your mind and think about how much did I get already and when did I get this money. Okay. Can you also throw some light on the inheritance tax? What is it? What do you say? Uh, inheritance tax. I don't know the exact German word for this thing. Uh, um, sorry, can anyone say the exact German word for inheritance? It's not striking mine. <laughs> Okay, 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 Erbschaftsteuer. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so when you will, or when your parents or somebody else is dying and you will get an Erbe, um, yeah, there's a, also the tax free amount. It's the same like in the gift <laughs> section, only if. Um, Let's say you are, you or your, your husband is dying, then the tax free amount is 500,000 euro. And there are also some special amounts you can declare, which is tax free and also some, um, some Vermögenswerte, some 
Yeah. Hope you understand it. Like your personal flat. This is not like money. So let's say the husband is dying and you have 500,000 euros and your private flat where you're living and your wife will get everything. Then this is tax free because she just gets 500,000 euro cash and your private personal flat and the private private personal flat um, as long as she lived there then it's, there, there's nothing special okay fine go at this point yeah but for Erbschaftsteuererklärung, um, this is really not my business so if you have really questions then uh, we we'll have to arrange uh, a meeting okay uh fine thank you uh, regarding the double household, double household expenses, I think so. We spoke already about this particular point, so I would like to jump this section. So, what are the different possible options we have to do the tax declaration in Germany? Okay, I think you have really everything. So, the one is Elster. Elster yeah. is is also an online software right now, and since the tax year two thousand twenty you have to submit the tax de declaration in an electronic way you're not allowed to send it in um, with paper so you have to submit it online with elster or any yeah. other software or with a tax advisor okay uh, how much would it normally cost if i'm doing my yeah. elster and online software and with the help of a tax consultant what is the basic fees okay so um the fees depends on your total income um, because um, if you earn, let's say, 100,000 euro, then you have to pay around 600 to 1,200 euro. It depends on the tax editor, uh, how much he will charge, because uh, there's a, um, yeah, we can choose uh, how much we want to get for this. Um, if you just earn 50,000 euro, then the price is maybe around 400 to 800 euro so it just depends on your personal income and it's from the minimum amount for tax advisor is maybe 400 euro to 10,000 euro this really depends on your total income for a usual guy with the usual income it's 400 to 1500 euro per year okay got it and uh, what would be the price if we won't like, I mean, uh, why do we need to really go with the help of the tax consultant? Although when you say it, it's almost on 400 to 800 euros on an average, some tax consultant charge, why do we really need to go for the tax consultant? Can you give a valid point which will be convincing for us? Yeah, because tax advisors really needs all the uh, knows all the rules. Yeah, um, If they doing a mistake, then you don't have to pay for this mistake. Yeah. Uh, tax advisors have insurances for this so that you can be safe. Okay, my tax declaration is really good prepared and there is no mistake in it. Yeah, um, because you have to keep in your mind, as I already said, within 10 years, the tax office can change your tax assessment if they see, oh, you have another income which is not declared. And so the tax advisor really knows all the rules, will ask you for any income you will have will declare everything correct and then usually you won't have any problems with the tax office. Mm -hmm. OK, so this is just a basic advantage for me that uh, as a tax consultant, you will be making the best out of it. And also you have an I have a separate insurance which will be helping me to fight against your decision, whatever you made. Yeah, that, that's also the possibility. Uh, tax advisors knows. Um, OK, here you can put some flat costs in your tax declaration. And there is another position where you can uh, try to get something um, which is just a usual way. Um, but this is just because we have so much customers and we know what costs a normal guy have. And so when you just um, didn't or you, you can't find an invoice, this is no problem for us. So then we just say, OK, uh, this guy should have these and this and this and these costs and then we can declare two or three hundred euro as flat costs yeah? if the tax office is asked for anything then we have to say uh, no we didn't find the bill but you have these costs 
but there's no guarantee, yeah. Okay. But tax advisors, yeah, knows know really a lot. And I think tax advisors will get you a better refund, yeah. Uh, can you also tell us how much would be the price if I would like to do the tax consultation with help of you? Okay. If you work together with me, with myself together, um, then my price is 100 euro. So for all of you which are now in this group or in this session, if you just uh, write me an email or when we get in contact, you can just say that we were together in this session and then I will just give you um, an uh, rabat or bonus benefit of 10%. So then your tax declaration just costs 90 euros. Okay, that's really a good offer what you're giving for our subscribers. Thank you so much, Vincent. Then, uh, for the people who would like to get in touch with uh, Vincent, I also created a separate form which I have sent in the messages. Kindly fill that form so that we'll get all your contact details. Then I can forward it to Vincent. Also, I'll share this particular number to him. And you can also get in personal touch with him and he can get you all the required documents which is required for the tax declaration. So would you also tell what kind of documents do you require if the people would like to do the tax declaration with help of you? Yeah, so I'm asking at the beginning when we get in touch uh, with new customers, I will ask or I will send the customers a list of documents and information which I need from them. So I asked for everything um, we talked about. Um, and then you can just collect the documents and send it to me. Yeah. Then I will start work at your tax declaration. And during my work, um, if I find something which is missing, I will just contact you. But um, yeah, I have a special list of all the documents which I need from you. And yeah. as soon as you contact me, then I will just send it to you. And yeah, it's really easy. Okay, that's very nice then. Yeah. Good. Then now we can, I think so we almost come to a personal end of the yeah. session actually. I hope we already yeah. had a overview of all the different important topics what the people would like to hear from you. Now we can go with the yeah. messages because there were too many messages coming up. I hope I answered almost the most important things which is related to the topic here. Um, let me go from the starting beginning yeah. actually. I don't need to overflow it. Can I, can I ask a question if it's okay? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, but I don't want everyone to come in the picture, so it will be a little bit disturbing because we have more than 200 people here yeah. on the light room. Uh, maybe yeah. since you started, you can shoot your question. So in the meantime, I'll arrange it. So basically, I'm about to get my German citizenship in next four months, and I want to leave Germany uh, forever. But I earn as a day trader here, and every year since last three years, I'm earning something like 30 to 40,000 euros per year. Uh, now, if I go back to India and I never come back to Germany holding a German passport, since I'm not earning any money on the German soil, uh, I can change my, I just have a normal trading account and I'm earning it on an Indian soil. In this case, do I need to pay taxes in Germany on this 40,000 or 30,000 euros capital gains? The stock is from Deutsche Zitra or whatever you have, Dax Dreisig, but the trading is not done on the German soil. I don't have uh, uh, any uh house okay. or anything i just move out completely and never come back okay um so officially i have to say yes you have to um declare this income in your personal tax equation in germany yeah but even if i don't live here i don't have a so house if, so if you if you uh, do not live here then you don't have to do a tax equation yes but yeah. i'm a german citizen in that case uh, so but but it, it doesn't matter so when you don't live in Germany, you don't have to do a German tax declaration. Okay. Then yeah, you have just to do to, in, another, in another country. Yes, exactly. Just to support Vincent, uh, is Darwin, I'm saying, I know many freelancers who are working for German companies from Indian soil and who are getting freelance salary in India from German companies who are German citizens, but they are on the Indian soil but they don't pay any tax to the German government because they are not registered in Germany. So you can get, you have to do for the Indian government. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, is it also possible to redo the tax declaration for the year 2017 since there are a lot of things which were missed when the tax declaration was done? Is it still possible to do it in the next year, mentioning that I missed some documents in the previous years? 
Um, yes. So um, we, we cannot we cannot change your tax declaration that you will get something uh, that you will get a refund. You can only um, correct your tax declarations. In this case, you have or you forgot to declare some income. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, so do we, we cannot change it to a better way. Okay, got it. Do we need to pay any kind of penalty when we don't do submit our tax declaration? Because I heard something with 25 euros of penalty per month will be claimed from the finance sub. Is it true? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So but this the tax service is allowed to to um, uh, get a minimum penalty of 25 euros per month. Um, since last year, the tax office is really hard sometimes. And then you just have to pay three, or there are also cases with 500 or 600 euros. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. That is an important thing which we have to keep in mind. All the mandatory people must do the tax declaration in the corresponding year without fail. Uh, if I'm paying a home loan in India, I mean, housing loan in India, can I get exempt for the amount transferred from here? Um, no. Just because the, the flat in India is just private or only in case. No, it's, it's just private from the German side. OK, because you, when your wife is, is living there, then you can declare costs for double household in Germany. But your flat in India is always private. Uh huh. OK, do I need to also prove all the expenses? I mean, do I need to provide any kind of bills for the tax declaration or it is only when the finance requests you to provide the bills? Yeah, so you, you should save all your uh, receipts and bills and documents, but you don't have to send it to the tax office only in case the tax office is asked for some bills. But this is just, um, I don't know, the tax office will just ask once in 100 tax equations. Uh huh, okay. Uh, I had two jobs going on at the same time. One was on contract basis for six months and the other one was the full time job. Now I have only one full time job. In this case, do my tax category change from one to some other tax category or I can what, what is the best option in this case? Um, so and the, the first the, the this guy have two jobs. And one was on the contract basis for six months, which was and also a full time job. He was doing it parallelly. Let's say that he was in tax class one and other job was in tax class six. And after six yeah. months, he don't have the job or the second job. Can he yeah. still stay in the tax class yeah. one or do we need to do anything apart from that? No, usually the, the, the tax office will just change your tax class in tax class one because tax class one is correct. You just need a tax class six if you have more than uh, one job. OK, got it. Uh, so I declared a tax for 2019 together for me and my wife for the first time. Now I got a letter from the finance and reclaiming I have to give the clearance. What I have to do in this case? You have to do a clearance. Yeah, the, the person just got some kind of letter from the finance. Summit. Normally they should know what I did together for me and my wife because I'm not able to follow the question exactly here, but this is a question written in the messages. Um, I don't know what uh, you mean with Clarifies. Okay, then maybe we can make it in a personal session so that the person can ask it more concrete. Sorry. Just so again, uh, what is the thing if I'm claiming it also if I'm receiving any kind of bonus for the company? Uh, sorry, I have to reframe the question. I'm receiving a relocation bonus, but only 50% of the amount is paid by the company. Can I still uh, claim the additional 50% in my tax declaration? Yes. OK, the answer is very simple. That's good. And uh, also during relocation, uh, can we also claim the children tuition cost allowance or any other kind of things? So um, you can try to, to declare some costs, especially, especially to get the blue card or something else. But usually the tax office will just say no. Um, any other costs, for example, for the to, to get the blue card um, is just private because you moved here and you can just declare your real move costs. So just the flight and stuff like this. Yeah. OK, if my kid who is above 18 who is studying abroad, can I also claim this uh, student expenses expenses here in tax declaration in Germany? Because my study, my son is studying abroad, not in Germany. Yes, you can. OK, I, uh, so I have to just show the normal bills for it. Yeah, so um, you can declare um, or the, your child 
will be a tax child for the German tax equation. And you can declare some um, tax free amounts when your child is not living at your house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So I'm a student and was paying taxes from the part time jobs. Can I directly claim tax return yeah. after I join a full time job or is it good to file a tax return yeah. before I join a full time job? What would be your personal advice? Um, I don't know whether yeah. I get it correct, but do the tax declarations as soon as possible. Okay, it's always advice we'll do every year, right? It is not required to wait till I find my uh, new job. Yeah, I think this is the better way because then you just won't forget anything. Just do it every every year. Yeah. Okay, then I'm just rolling around the fastly about other questions actually here. Uh, if I started working in Germany from June 2019 and from uh, January to May, I was working in India. Do I still need to submit this income here in Germany? Uh, yes. Okay, it all comes under worldwide income here. Yeah. Okay. So, and, uh, ju just a general information for, for all of you. Yeah, the tax here in Germany is from January to December, not from. Uh, March or from, from April till March. Just general information. Okay. Uh, we paid over 1,500 euros for hospital bill, birth of baby. We had to opt for private room as my husband couldn't come again due to Corona. Can we declare this bill for the tax rebate? Yes, you can. Uh, how what is there any kind of limit that we have to declare? I can also say even 10,000 euros I spent for my thing. No, you. There, there's no maximum amount. But there's a kind of minimum amount because um, in, the, in Germany, the, the tax office says um, you are married and have a child. And so 2% of your total income is okay when you have to pay this for your health costs. If it is more than 2 or 3% of your total income, then these are special costs and you can declare it in a tax declaration. So um, just short declaration. Um, if you have just five or 600 euros costs for your health uh, or for some doctor bills or uh, yeah, something like this, um, you won't get any benefit. Only in case if you have really a lot of costs. For example, if you have 5,000 euro costs because you have a big accident and then you can declare these costs in a tax declaration and then you will also get a benefit. Okay. Uh, yes, I think so. We almost came to the end of the questions. Actually, I also sent a form. The reason for the people to fill this particular form is it's easier for us to forward all your personal details to him. And also, I mentioned in the form exactly this will be used only to transfer your data to the tax consultant and not for any other purposes. There won't be any kind of personal advertisements. Uh, if you look into the form, you will see all kind of questions for what purpose this is used. So kindly use this form to fill your if you want to get in touch with a tax consultant. That way we can make the job easier for our tax consultant. What's so, the question? I know this was not a question to you, Vincent, oh, but it's the information okay. for the people because they were saying okay. different pattern shoots, they would not like to share the information to our Wanakam Germany yeah. channel. I accept it completely and we also registered company here in Germany. We would like to share the information yeah. only to the concerned team. So that's what we've written the data and shoots exactly in our website also. Um, so I think, uh, fine. Now I think we all, yes, please. Uh, will the tax consultant automatically he will contact us once we share the information or we need uh, we will get his email ready to contact him? Uh, well, you will be just contact me. So that is what just write me. In. Sorry. Yes, Vincent, please. No, no, it's your turn. Yeah, this is also possible to connect directly with also a tax consultant, but it will also be overwhelmed with too many responses. So if we go through a single platform, it's more easier for him to follow it up. That's the reason why we would request you people to do it. And I will also see the share the link once again to you people in the session so you can fill the form once again. Or you can also get connected with the Vanakam Germany thing, Vanakam Germany Priya at gmail.com if you want to also ask more questions about a tax consultant or any, any other factors. But I also personally say you people, if you join this, if you are going to do the tax declaration with the help of Vincent's, you will be getting 10% discount only when you say that you are coming through our channel. If not, you won't be getting this particular offer, what Vincent's offered for us. So how do we contact Vincent's directly then? His email ID is there. Um, 
Vincent, how would you prefer? Would you like to get the people directly connected with you or um, through our Vanakam Germany channel? What would be your preference? I'm open for both the things. Yeah, for me, both is fine. Yeah, they can also uh, get in contact with me directly, just by email or by by WhatsApp. So, can you share your email ID, please? Then. Like, I think. Can Can you share my 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 contact dates to everyone? Yes, info at Hagidan Office D, right? Okay, I will send it in the chat. Uh, can you just one. write it? Yeah, please. Thank you. Yeah, I will just write it. Okay, so almost we came to the end exactly in the punkt landung we say in German actually on time we are going to end our session today. I hope you people all enjoyed the session at least got some useful information and also how we can do the tax declaration. So kindly share also some kind of reviews if you liked our session which would help for us to improve in the future sessions actually. Yeah, I can't write anything. Even I have the same issue I did from my wife mobile it worked but I just left a message to the people here. Yeah. Um Aravind, do I think you have my my correct um um WhatsApp number and also email address. Can mm -hmm. you just share it? We don't have your WhatsApp number. Can you no, share it on the chat uh, please? From Aravind, are you there? Yeah. Or maybe uh, Vincent you can just write it. Yeah, yeah, Vincent, I'm sharing it. I'm sharing it. One second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. I have a question here. Uh, do we also get a quote for how much refund we will get during the tax declaration or before submitting the document? Yeah, sure. I will just calculate calculate it in the first step. Okay. And we'll tell you the expected refund. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I have one question. If we are bringing in money from India, I think we briefly discussed about this topic before. But it's little different from that. So the the exact question is that if let's say I bring some money from India, do I have to inform Finanzam? Because I heard from someone that we should be informing the Finanzam within the few days of initiating the transfer or the foreign remittance. No, you don't have to inform the tax office. Maybe even if, uh, even you even if the bank is twenty to thirty thousand euros. There's no problem. Yeah, you can just transfer it. Maybe your your bank will contact you and ask, um, where do you get this money from? And then you uh, have to say or need to send a proof that this is your own money. And this is not because you earned something in India. But the tax office won't ask for anything. Yeah? Okay, so that that was regarding the intimation to the finance. Is clear. How about the declaration in the tax returns at the end of the year? You don't have to declare some um, amounts. You just transfer between your personal uh, banks. All right. Okay. okay. Thank oh. you. I think more personal questions. Maybe you can get in touch with Vincent. Maybe. This way, you can also answer your query very concretely. I think so. Yeah. Also, Arvind has shared the contact number of the Vincents in the chat. You can also get in touch with him. I hope you will see all these messages because we are almost around 200 people in the session. Everyone yeah. will get in touch with the Vincents in the coming days. Uh, Vincents, thank you so much for your time and also helping our community here. Yeah. Uh, we'll thank catch you in another interesting session, maybe after three to four months, so that we'll get with more interesting queries. Yeah, sure. So, thank you, people, all. Then yeah. have a nice evening then. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please upload this video somewhere because we, we want you. to refer this to this video again. As you have already uh, recorded, yes, please we try to, upload. Yes, we will try to upload it. We'll try to cut and edit it properly and try to upload it. But I can't promise in the next week, but in the upcoming days. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, do it on the YouTube so that we could give you some good views. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye bye.